Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a minute. Uh, it's been a second since I've done one of these. Welcome back to Unedited Edits. Uh, <laughs> I almost said I'm your host. Maybe I am your host. You know what? I am your host today. It's me, your host, Wampus. Or you can call me Brandon or just B. Um, if you are newer to the channel or this series of videos, basically what we're going to do is break down an edit that I've done recently. And today's video is playing right now and it's a gameplay guide that I made for uh, Zach, Mr. Exact. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the video came out. With stuff like these, there's... Um, there's always more that you want to do with it. There's always things that I wish I had more time to learn or figure out. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Happy with how it came out. Excuse me. And um, we've gotten some of the analytics back from the video. We posted it a couple days ago at the time I'm recording this, and uh, ended up having really good retention throughout the video. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I figured this would be a good one to talk about and break down how I approached it. So normally when I'm doing the unedited edits, the first part that I like to talk about is my overall thought process behind the video. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, in the background, what you're gonna see is me setting up the opening title sequence display. It's got a, a filmic look to it. And I go through a process of trying to figure out exactly how I want things position, position displayed. And I ended up recording me going through this process over the course of, I believe, four days. So there might be jumps here and there um, in terms of you know what's being displayed on the timeline. And I'll try to make note of that as we go along. But here's what's going on in the video. Recently in Call of Duty, they just released a new map, the Ashika Island map. <clears throat> um, at the time we were putting this video together, the map was brand new, and Zach is just coming back to creating content on YouTube, and what we thought would be fun is to create a guide for somebody who's dropping in for their first time. And the thought was instead of just having like a, hey, these are um, five things you should know about dropping into a chic island, which is also a very valid subject and a, a, a good way, of, I think, approaching a YouTube video. One of the thoughts we had was like, well, what if we, what if we can theme this video in a way to where it's like a tourist guide. You know, like if you were to go visit somewhere new for the first time, what are some things you need to know? Uh, side note, in the background, um, I'm using the object removal tool in DaVinci, which I just discovered. And I have a feeling it's something that a lot of people don't know about. And I might make a separate video on how to use it because it's pretty cool. I'm using some of the trailer footage from Ashika Island that um, is from Call of Duty's YouTube page, and it has their logos and stuff on it. And in order to get the cinematic look that I was going for, I wanted to remove those. So I'm using this object removal tool right now. Um, and essentially all you do is you, you draw a shape where you'd like to remove what's in the background, and it, it does like a content aware fill to replace it. It's pretty cool. Um, and that's that's what I'm trying to sort out right now. So yeah, essentially what we thought about doing was theming this in a way to where, you know, <laughs> you're arriving in on the flight to Ashika Island, which is what happens in game. And as you depart from the flight, you know, let, let us be your tour guide for the video. And Ultimately, this breaks down into, I would say, two major parts of the video itself. We have this opening sequence here uh, that I'm working on in the background. And the it, it only lasts, 
at like a minute and a half, two minutes. I think maybe it's under a minute and a half. It's not very long. But this opening sequence is what I end up spending the most time on because I use it to set the tone, the theme, and to hopefully hook people into watching this video. And I can elaborate more on my, my thought process um, for this opening section. And the back half of the video, or the majority of the video, the, the last eight minutes, are the actual guide itself. And that entails voiceover work from Zach, displaying certain tips on screen, and breaking down gameplay for somebody to follow along. And in essence, what we're trying to do is to um, entice the viewer quickly with, hey, one, this video is going to be useful to me, and two, it's going to be more than just a gameplay tip. Like, this might actually be an entertaining video. Whenever I personally watch gaming videos or YouTube videos, it norm I mean, normally within those, like, first 30 seconds to a minute, I mean, not even 30 seconds, but only, like, the first 5 to 10 seconds, you, you kind of know how much thought and time went into the video, into making the video. Not every video needs a lot of thought and time, but I watch a lot of YouTube. So when I'm scrolling through videos, I am normally looking for something that I feel like somebody's put effort into. So that's essentially what we're trying to do with the intro. And what you're seeing right now is I'm looking for audio to use. And I say it all the time, but audio is so important in any YouTube video and adding some value to it. I, I There's a couple of sound effects I use in this video that playing it back, I wish I had used something different or changed, but at the time it seemed like a good working solution. And um, I don't think you'll be able to hear previews of this in the background because um, I'm only recording audio from DaVinci and I think I'm previewing it in um, Windows Explorer. So, yeah, I, I think that covers the the premise, I guess, the, the thought process behind going into the video. Um, the other, I would say, the only other thing I would say to that is that uh, what originally sparked that idea was, I don't know what, like, what the, uh, the thing that triggered the thought was, but there was um, a thought initially for like a Jurassic Park kind of theme you know it's like this wondrous place that you go to and it's new and exciting so there's um i don't know if i've already included it in the video have i already included? i'm looking in the background right now i'm not sure if i've already included it but before um i think before i even started the editing process i looked for sound bites from the jurassic park theme and some people had remixed it in unique ways. And there was a piano solo version of the theme. And I don't know if it's one-to-one um, -one with the, the actual theme or if somebody you know, did an inspired version, but that's what we end up playing. So there's like an opening track that we use um, from the Jurassic Park theme. And the first five seconds, um, are a pretty stylized look at the war zone plane flying in. Um, there is a film burn overlay that we use. Uh, the plane is, I think, overlaid onto the film strip, or it's the other way around. And I was also able to find this title preset with um, this, it's kind of like a unique blocking of the words attention and please, I think is what it, I used. And then I think I used some kind of like glitch, staticky um, effect on that so that it, it cycles up and down. So if you go back and play the video at all, 
the like first couple seconds you see the plane flying in with the film and then there's like a tension please that kind of flashes on the screen and it's it's pretty short and quick but it i feel like it adds just you know like a little extra something to those opening opening couple seconds to kind of lock in your eyes and get your attention and then after that what we do is those opening sections say attention please we are now arriving to Ashika Island, which is um, the voice I generated through a text-to-speech service online. And there's a, I think it's like a lens flare or a burn or something that transitions to shots of the island itself. And those are the, the, the trailer footage that I took from Call of Duty. And the first words that you actually hear from Zach are, welcome to Ashika Island. And I wanted to do unique text for Ashika Island and maybe even do something 3D and um, and grungy and dirty that um, really fit the Jurassic Park theme. But the best shot from the trailer, and I wish there was either a theater mode or Call of Duty had put out more assets for people to use. But it's the shot of the castle, right? That's like Ashika Island, the Japanese theme, cherry blossoms. It's the shot of the castle. And there's big and bold are the words Ashika Island. So I was like, well, what's probably going to be easiest is for me to not spend time developing my own title. Let's use Call of Duties and then I can just add welcome to it. And I tried to match or find a similar font. And when you see a Shika Island displayed from the trailer, it's got um, it's got like a a dirty overlay on it of some kind. So I try to match that as well. And here, what I'm doing is I was syncing the different parts of the clip to the piano hits. And I think right now, what I'm looking to do is figure out my transition out of there because i have yeah so I, you can see you could see on the on the right there that was different snippets from the trailer that i ripped and i think i wasn't sure if i wanted to go into gameplay or um just continue to use the trailer and i might need to skip ahead i think we should be good but i might need to skip ahead because i had some rendering and caching issues in this section that i think i cut out not 100% sure. Oh, okay. So, um, I also, oh yeah, here's, <laughs> here's where I had issues with it, the object removal tool. The trailer that I ripped was pretty low res and the object removal tool was struggling to work with it. So let me actually skip ahead. All right. So, um, I think at this stage, the opening 10, 15 seconds are done. And that purple pinkish uh, track that you're seeing right there is Zach's voice, his voiceover. I, I have a couple, well, actually, I don't know if I did it in this one. Normally what I do is I have a timeline that I'll set up for voiceover stuff. I'll have a timeline that I set up for raw unedited cuts of the gameplay to pull from. Um, but I'm not sure if I did that. And I think what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to figure out how I get out of that opening section because what we want to do is we have we have the welcome to Ashika Island and then it's like slow-mo, slow-mo, slow-mo cinema and then what I in my head what I'm thinking is um, I want to punch into the gameplay and have something that reaffirms that like okay we're actually going to be doing a Sheikah island right and what you saw briefly right there as well are some irl shots of zach getting to his setup that was another i think unique aspect that we did to the video and it only makes it in for maybe a second or two but something that is normally lacking from gaming videos are things from <laughs> Uh, different perspectives, I guess I should say. Normally when you watch a gaming video, if it's a third person game, you're always following around the same character. Or if it's a first person game, you are always looking forward, like from the same point of view. So 
something that I feel is interesting or unique to do is if you have stuff that you can add that almost gives your mind like a, a different look or idea from always staring at the the same the same uh, the same angle I guess um, one it's good for I think viewer retention and two it just it makes the video more engaging it makes it more interesting add some personality to it so um also wow we are already <laughs> Dude, it's you know what's funny about these unedited edits? I think I say I've said this every time. Time flies, but it also doesn't fly. Oh my gosh, would you look at that guy? Hey, look, there's me on stream, my big old forehead. Uh, this next section I edited live on stream. You can catch me live sometimes at twitch.tv slash wampus. Got a clean handle for that. It said twitch.tv slash wampus. I think the link is in the description. Um, yeah, so the, I edited the, uh, the next upcoming sections on stream, but what I was going to say is what's funny about doing these unedited edits is it feel like it goes fast and it doesn't because I've been talking straight for 15 minutes and I haven't even like looked up for my watch. Uh, so if you made it to 15 minutes, you can claim your brownie points again if you want. I don't know what we're going to do with them. Is anybody keeping track? I don't know. But um, yeah, let me know. If you've made it this far, let me know if there's things you're finding useful. If you have questions, now's a good good chance to pause, take a break, get some water, come back. You can go ahead and pause the video. I'll be right here. Okay, so essentially, I think we've skipped forward a little bit, but what we've done is I have I finished the opening sequence. We have film burn, Plane, um, slow mo cinematics, and it's like there's like a boom punch into the gameplay, and I think it ends up working decently well. I'm pretty happy with it. But what my next task is is to make sure we deliver on the promise of the Ashika Island guide. So we got to start doing the actual guide and providing information to people so that they want to stay and watch the video and i had an idea to continue the retro vibe 90s kind of theme um ish <laughs> i don't know how well it's executed i'm still really wor learning more about uh visual effects and and graphics work i it's something that i struggle with every day but i'm trying i'm trying my best the, the idea that I had was to pop up and display a um, an older looking HUD heads up display and have that like typewritery digital typewritery um, text come on screen. And I actually, I didn't make the typewriter text myself. I was thinking about doing it, but anytime you do stuff like that manually, it it takes so long. So. I think it flashed on screen a little bit ago. I have a free trial right now with Envato Elements and that thing is a cheat code. I got it. I think I need to get an affiliate code for that because I think I might switch from Storyblocks to Envato and that's no disrespect to Storyblocks, but they have so much stuff. I think I was originally Googling around for a certain something and their website came up and they had it and then it was like do you want to start a free trial and i was like for sure oh you know what it was random i was looking for uh light leaks and lens flares for photoshop because i it just i don't know i was looking for something like that they had a bunch i started the free trial downloaded a bunch of that stuff and then i was working on this video at the same time and uh yeah i was like i might as well use it so there's a lot of audio sound effects I pull from Envato. Uh, I actually downloaded a lot of dinosaur sound effects that didn't make it into the video. They just ended up coming off kind of cliche and, and corny and, and weird. But yeah, shout out Envato Elements. If you if you guys see me with an Envato code next week, just know, man, I put him, I said some nice things to them. Man, that would be awesome. Anyways. I end up using Envato to build out this digital overlay. And 
I think it ends up being one of the best visuals that we make. With stuff like this, I think that you can sit down and make it yourself, but sites like Envato, and I know a lot of people use Motion Array, and I think Artlist.io is another one. If you are going to be editing or even just creating content and you are doing it more than just for fun, I cannot stress enough how useful something like this is or, you know, like using Epidemic for music or whatever music service that you like. It, it's just it's it's completely worth the worth the investment because the time it takes me to download that versus the time it takes me to create something like that on my own, it's invaluable, invaluable. Uh, and what we end up doing is I, you can see in the timeline, there's a few layers that we have going on. One of them is the floating gr blue grid in the background. It's kind of the base, the background. Um, there's also actually a line that displays in the top left and top right, and they might be a little hard to see in the preview window, um, but they're used to uh, border the display, and the I think I add a grain as well, a film grain, to um, roughen up the uh, the footage, because you know if you're trying to display something old school. You don't want stuff that's too, too clean, but I cannot be 100% sure. The other thing that we do to help add some contrast and make the text stand out is when the text and the grid display on screen, I either lower the opacity or I actually go into the color page and bring the overall gain down in the video. You can see that the background is darker when the grid is displayed versus when the grid isn't displayed. So that's that's kind of like the background. And then for the text, that's that title template that I'm talking about. I have this title animation that I was able to get from Envato and it has that cool typewriter effect. And then the only thing I change on it is, and I don't know if we've already passed it, but in the fusion page, not on the home page, or the, not the home page, the, uh, the edit page, excuse me. In the fusion page, I add a glow node to it. And I'm not, ooh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a subtle glow. It just um, adds some softness, makes it feel like it's dis displaying on a screen a little bit more than um, if you were to just leave it alone. And here we are in Envato. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, sound design again, right? Super important. I wanted some kind of digital typing effect. So I think I literally, I searched in Envato digital type and there was a digital readout sound effect and it came actually in with, yeah, like a bunch of them. So I think there's, what is that, four or five, something like that, which is nice because I'm able to use one for the original write-on and then I'm able to use like lower octaves um, for the second one, which is cool. The only other thing I think I haven't mentioned here is that uh, the text opens with um, what you need to know about resurgence, something along those lines. And I use a glitch transition to bring it to a Sheikah Island because I believe what Zach says is if you're new to resurgence mode, a Sheikah Island or something like that, and it, it syncs up with that phrasing. And that's basically how that shot is set up. And you can see it being played out right there. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it ended up looking. So um, worked out pretty well. It worked out pretty well. And the shot after it that I use is Zach parachuting in. And I, oh no, it's not. Okay, so I say, excuse me, excuse me. Pardon me, I saved that for a different part of the video. So it looks like the next shot is um, uh, like a top play clip. And I think the reason I do that is because 
Um, Zach, yeah, that's the reason why I do it. Because Zach says uh, in the voiceover, you know, it's a lot faster and the game is more fun. So we wanted to highlight that. Yeah, movement speeds increase. It's fun. So we showed off what we're talking about. We were illustrative with what we were saying. And eventually what we do with that clip is we... I think I sync and slow it down and retime it to the the hit of the song. The the song that's playing in the background has got a lot of bass to it. It's pretty punchy, uh, which makes it really nice and easy to edit with. So that's what we do. And right now I am making a cutout of Ashika Island because oh yes I remember. Huh? I'm starting to remember now. It's been a couple days since I've done this. Um, essentially, what happens in the video, right? I think I'm sorry if I'm. I know I'm repeating myself a bunch, and I apologize for that. But we have opening ten seconds. We have the digital display screen. Zach says, "Welcome back to Ashika. It's fun." And now we're delivering on the promise of the guide, right? So back to big picture. We're still trying to make the video fun and engaging, but we want to make sure we're still providing that information. So the next thing that he says are, these are some of the POIs, the points of interest. These are some areas that you can look to find on the map. So if you're dropping in, here's some, some cool areas to look for. And, oh, there's my dog. That's Miss Sadie. She's my doggo. She is extremely needy, but we love her. Also, side note, do you guys judge me that I'm wearing glasses? I feel like I'm being judged while you're watching me with the glasses on. But anyways, um, instead of um, just talking about the POIs, I wanted to show a map of them. And instead of just showing a like the normal default map that everybody is using to display, to continue along with the thought of discovering this island and you're visiting the island, um, what I try to do is make this almost like treasure mapping, treasure map looking version of Ashika. And it ends up looking okay. It's pretty pixelated when you start to zoom in. And I think I am going to add some um, paper tearing to the edge using a, a paintbrush that I have. But essentially all, all you do is you add, you add whatever background you'd like to, it, to overlay to desaturate your image after it's already been masked out and then the filter that you're looking for is stylize and find edges and then once you find the edges it'll it'll generate an outline and depending on uh, what the ratio is between black and white long lines excuse me you might have to invert it which is what I did and then you just change the composite mode and you you kind of have an outline overline out, outline overline, Brandon. An outline overlay. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, but yeah, it, I actually, it's surprising how much time I end up spending in Photoshop. I am not a big Adobe person, but I love Photoshop. I end up using it a lot just to make quick, simple graphics and cutouts. Um, I think that's something that isn't considered a lot for people that are editors even if you're you know like a content creator a lot of times the assets that go into a video aren't provided and you, you kind of have to make them yourself you either got to get them from Envato or you got to make it yourself and so for this one we made it ourselves and I feel like it helps add to the aesthetic of the video continuing on with some of the uh, the jungle jungle type theme so yeah, I, I think if I had more time, I really need to figure out how to make this look cleaner. But overall, I think it looks fine. And I use, I wanted to do a paper tear rip transition to bring on the map. But I end up saving that transition for a later part of the video when we display the loadouts. And I think I recorded me doing that. I'm not sure, but I think think I did. Instead, what we do is this burn away transition. It's a standard tra transition in DaVinci, but it seemed appropriate for um, for this particular thing, you know, paper burn, all that good stuff. And with that, we are back to me just working in silence. <laughs>
staring at my monitor in a lone space. Uh, this is a little bit jump forward in the timeline. Uh, I think at this point, the intro 30 seconds, the uh, excuse me, the opening 30 seconds to a minute are completed. But I'm not 100% sure. And we are 30 minutes into the video. Woo, look at us go. Just talking about editing. I love you guys for watching this video, man. Thank you so stinking much for watching. I mean, wow. Thank you so much. Uh, if you made it this far in this video, tell me, um, have you seen the new Jurassic Park movies, excuse me, Jurassic World movies, and did you like them? I watched one, it was bad, and I decided not to watch any of the new ones, and that's my story. All right, so at this point, a little check-in, right? We got opener, and we're starting the guide section, and the way we're starting this guide section is with the map, and we're calling out the POIs. The way we do that is we burn on the map into the screen and then we have um, we have keyframes to zoom in on the actual text on the map. So Zach says like there's beach club, shipyard, shipwreck, cargo, I don't, I don't know what the POIs are, but the map jumps to those different POIs when Zach's talking about it. And now I'm looking to build out the rest of the video. There is, I can't see the timestamp for my preview window, so I'm, I'm sorry about that, but um, there's like, I think it was eight minutes of Zach doing voiceover stuff. So my goal for the back half of the video now, right? If you remember, there's essentially two parts. We have the opener, and then we have the back half of the video. And I have one last major sequence for me, one last Brandon major sequence for the opening section that we're we're hopping into the rest of the video. Um, there's a couple things going on. We're syncing up Zach's talking points now. It's less about cinematics and being and like highlight plays, and it's more we're starting to work more towards the meat uh, of what we're supposed to be talking about. So there's two things happening. One, I want to transition away from the opening audio track. And two, I want to start displaying more info and more gameplay. And the last informative graphic that we're going to do is this four-player cutout on screen. And this was a new endeavor for myself. And I think it's something I probably should have done in After Effects. What's going to happen is that Zach is talking about what the resurgence mode is in itself. This is supposed to be a beginner guide. It's not for the advanced player. It's for somebody who is new to resurgence mode. Okay. So if you're new, maybe you don't know how it works. And what he says is essentially, as long as one of your teammates is still up, you are allowed to respawn. So as long as one teammate is up, you are allowed to respawn. Now in my head, I'm trying to think, how, how can I display this? And my choices are either don't, just continue to show gameplay and have Zach's voice in the background. I could also use text and subtitles, which I think would have been uh, the easier route but still effective. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing subtitles. It, it still grabs the viewer's attention, especially since I haven't been using a lot of subtitles yet. So that would be noticeable. Or we come up with some kind of info graphic. If you've watched any kind of, I don't know, more produced YouTube videos, there's some level of um, graphic that is used to um, either provide information, it's used for a comedic effect, you know, they bring in an animator to um, add cartoons to whatever. And so that's what I decided to do. I, I am gonna try my best to animate what Zach is talking about. And the way I'm gonna decide to do it is um, I did a Google search for Warzone character models. And I was looking for similar-ish views and perspectives of character models 
so that it would seem like it's in unison. And it looks like, I don't know if this is in like the character selection screen where these are all coming from, but there's like a, the same lighting and um, perspective is used for a lot of these uh, screenshots that I'm finding on Google image. So I'm like, perfect, let's do that. So I pick four, I pick four character models. And what I'm gonna do is mask them out in Photoshop. I don't think, I wonder if you could do the masking in DaVinci. I don't know, Photoshop is just so easy to mask and cut stuff out, so I, that's what I do there. Mask them out, export them, save them, bring them into DaVinci, and what I'm going to attempt to do is show three team members being eliminated, and one of them being emphasized when he says, as long as one person is up, and then having the three redisplay, and I had a, I had a lot of ideas for uh, how I could do this, and I didn't really come up with something that I felt stuck with me. You know, that really stood out as like, a, oh, that would be a really good way of doing it, while also f feasible. Because there, my my animation skills are for sure limited. The way I started it though, is I looked for a backdrop for this. I feel like whenever I see videos that do this kind of effect, there's normally like a pretty plain background. It's either just like a solid color or it's like some kind of really simple moving background or something. So I think this one is from Storyblocks. I, I could be wrong, but I I looked for a, um, like just a real basic geometric pattern uh, to use for my backdrop. And now I'm starting to size and position all the character models. I did a basic color correction for one of them. And then I copy and paste that correction onto all of them so that they all look similar-ish. I'm not sure if I do any fine tuning or not. But um, I don't think I end up using that pattern. I think I bring in the gameplay because it just, it doesn't it didn't look how I wanted it to look so right now in my head I'm I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to do this I know how I want to bring them all in and I think that's what I'm going to do right here I've noticed with some videos that one of the effects that they'll use is they'll slide things onto frame but in opposite directions so what I do is I have the character slide in from the bottom and I have the background slide in from the top. And the, um, the I think it's only six frames and I'm, I'm working a 60 FPS timeline. So it's, it's pretty quick, but it's kind of cool. It, uh, a little unique, little flair, something like that. And now what I'm, I think what I'm trying to do is figure out, okay, how, how do I want to display this? And I'm looking for things jungle related on Envato because I I just have no idea. Uh, I'm looking at cherry blossom stuff to see if there's like a cherry blossom background. I think I end up looking at that jungle temple one because I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I make this look appealing and not bad, I guess to put it bluntly. And I believe I download it. Do I download that temple? Is that the one I end up using? I might. I can't remember if I use the gameplay trailer, if I use this temple. But sometimes that's the, that's kind of how I figure stuff out is I just, yeah, I think I do actually now that I'm remembering it. So on Envato, I don't remember if I looked up like Japanese themed things or if this was cherry blossom something, but, um, I found this temple that looked like some of the architecture used in Ashika, and I was like, all right, perfect. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Uh, when I first drag it in, you can see that the castle, excuse, I keep, think I keep saying temple. I don't know if it's a temple or a castle, so excuse me if that's coming off ignorant. But the, the building in the background is one, too sharp, and it's not really in frame. So what I do is I blur it, and then I believe I add some zoom and I drag it up a little bit. If you ever have stuff that uh, doesn't seem to fit appropriately, if you have the pixels to work with, 
an easy fix is to zoom in and then slide it around using your position tools. It's also, um, side note, that's like a really easy way to add motion to videos as well. You can give it like a 1.1 zoom and then uh, keyframe left to right, up to down, up to top to, I keep saying up to down, top to bottom, Brandon, get it together, man. Um, so yeah, okay, cool. We got the background figured out. And what I end up deciding, in my head, I think what I had thought about, there's Santa, is I wanted to do like a, bah, bah, like an air buzzer when Zach is talking about if your teammates go down. And I wanted like a really basic red X. And I went on Envato and they have this really cool 3D one. So I was like, perfect. <laughs> That's like, that is what I wanted and better. So I don't have to do anything. It's already set up for me. I, I got a cut. A cut line um, right where he's saying your teammates go down or whatever he says. And the other thing that I do is not only do I add the red X, I desaturate the character models. Um, small thing, but again, adds to them being eliminated, you know, that effect. And now I'm looking for that air, air noise. Uh, I... Don't know what I end up settling on, but I had an idea for how I wanted it to sound, and I don't know if I ended up finding something that was exactly what I was looking for, but um, de you definitely want a sound effect there to emphasize that elimination process. And the other thing that I do is I increase the size of the ghost character model. I make him a little bit bigger. What Zach says is your players go down as long as somebody is still up. And when he's saying up, he gets bigger. And then I think the last thing that I do. Oh, okay. So I found a um, positive ding-ish <laughs> noise. Like a, I think it's a bell noise for um, when he says if one of your players is still up to emphasize one of those players still being up and I think the only other thing that I do is I keyframe the X's sliding off and I ooh do I add text behind it that would actually be kind of smart I wonder if I do that that's not a bad idea Brandon do you do that I think I do I do do that yeah <laughs> good work me Oh, wow. I impressed myself. I forgot I did this. So this is an area at subtitles to um, make sure people are understanding what's being said. Uh, this is a good talking point for Zach. And you see another cool thing about this is because I layer the text behind ghost right there, it adds a 3D element because, you know, he slides above the text while everything else stays below. Kind of cool. Kind of a cool looking effect, I don't know. But it, this process in itself, <laughs> it's if you look at the timeline right now, this whole sequence lasts maybe five to 10 seconds. Zach describing as long as one of your teammates is up, you know, you can respond back in. And me coming up with this animation probably took me, I don't know, a solid hour and a half, two hours. But I think it it was worth it. Um, I, I'm actually really happy with how it came out. I I know it's not anything um, to to uh, to write home about. I don't know why I said that. I was trying to think of a good phrase, and uh, that just does not sound right. Anyways, I know it doesn't look overly flashy but a lot of times when I try to add any kind of VFX and I say that lightly it just ends up looking really corny and bad so I was really happy with how that one came out but now let's finish up talking about the video because um, we got to make the whole video it, the time step right now says 56 seconds <laughs> so I've been talking for 45 minutes over 56 seconds of dang video, man. Tough. That is tough. Okay. And if I remember correctly, and 
<laughs> I'm not remembering correctly a lot of these times. Um, now we got to get into actually dropping in and um, giving people guides and, and tidbits. Oh, yeah. See, I think that came out really good. So the, the thought process for the rest of the video is um, now we start the gameplay breakdown. And we show off what things you need to do. There was a couple ways you could go about doing this. We could either have set talking points for the guide. This is what you want to do. Look out for these things. Um, use these buttons. You know, al almost like steps instead of suggestions. And what we decided to do is to use a walkthrough breakdown style for this video. It's a style that Zach has started to use in the past where he talks over, you know, he does a voiceover for the gameplay. And when there are important things that he talks about, maybe we'll show a replay, we'll add a graphic to it. But when I've worked with him, we have found it to be a better tool for not only showing off how good Zach is at the game, but also helping people, providing information for somebody watching. When you're doing gameplay stuff, I mean, the game, the gameplay or video that you're showing, it's either got to be really funny, it's um, got to provide something useful for the person watching, or it's got to do something that nobody else can do. And normally that's like something uh, competitive in, in some sense, and, you know, like a, a record or um, it shows off a skill that not a lot of people can do. And so with Zach, Zach is a really high skilled player. So we can do two things. We can show off things that not a lot of people can do, but at the same time, we can help people get to that point. And in my opinion, I feel like these kind of videos are worth double the value. Instead instead of us doing what I was just saying, and we, we have done guides like that in the past, like his movement guides, where we just say, follow these steps to get better. This way, I feel like when we do gameplay breakdowns that are tailored towards being a guide, um, it's more like you provide more real situations that people can learn from because while doing the button breakdowns is good, a lot of times it's not realistic or it's not like you you know you never see how to actually apply it. So that's what we decide to do with this. And I don't I know the I don't show me going through and editing the video in its entirety because um it would it would take too long um going through the entire voiceover gameplay breakdown. But I do have some things in here that could be useful. And I'm gonna do my best to talk about my my thought process for this. And let me yeah, so I'm just replaying the intro now because I'm trying to gauge the pacing and, and make any final changes. <laughs> for any of my other editors out there, I don't know how many times you have to replay a sequence before you're happy with it, but for me, it's probably at least 212, maybe 213, but normally 212 times I have to play back a video before I'm happy with it or a sequence. Um, I'm gonna do a quick color correction <laughs> on the video shout out Durka if you're watching this anytime I do any kind of gameplay stuff particularly in Warzone I like to add a little bit of contrast curve in and maybe give it just a little bit of saturation boost if it needs to a little bit of sharpening I don't know why Warzone looks so dull and so flat but it does so anytime I bring in a gameplay I do some color correction to um, boost it and I don't, do I turn it on and off here? I don't know. If you, <clears throat> even adding just like a slight amount of contrast and um, saturation, like a very small amount, not a lot, small, we do small, uh, it's noticeable. I'm telling you it's noticeable. You just gotta believe me, all right? It is 
noticeable. And shout out for my people watching this through 50 minutes, man. I mean, look at you guys go. Just sitting there listening to me talk. Okay, so for my 50-minute people gang, if you didn't answer the Jurassic Park question, that's fine. You didn't have to. I'm sure you you got me in the background. That's fine. I'm not mad at you. But do is there something in these videos that you maybe want me to break down even more? Do you like it when I talk more about my thought process? Do you like it when I talk more about specific things, you know, like uh, numbers that I use for settings or um, what, what in particular would be helpful for you in these videos that I could talk about? Because um, I, I don't mind doing that. I know somebody had left a comment asking for a montage breakdown. I can try to do that. It's not often that I do like a full on montage, but I have that in the back of my mind. If I were to be commissioned to do something like that, I, I can record that. And um, I think there was another comment asking for another particular type of video, but I don't, sometimes I don't have the opportunity to do those sorts of things. Um, but I'll try. I, I keep it in mind um, for the next one. And anybody who knows me knows that um, if you have a question about something, I always try my best to um, to answer that and help out. So just let me know. Let me know. Let me know if there's something you're curious about. But we got we got a little bit ways left on the edit, and we're starting to work into the gameplay. We haven't got into the actual gameplay itself. There's almost been this easing process of working into the gameplay. I'm working hard to keep people's attention through these this first opening minute, and I'm trying to really make sure that they understand we are providing information. You should stick around. I'm doing my best to keep the pace high, add a lot of value, add a lot of visual things to keep people engaged so that when we actually get into the gameplay, they understand that, okay, like I can trust this guy to um, give me the stuff that I need to know. And the first tip, tip that we, um, I think we sh actually share is to split up from your teammates. So before this, we're just, I think Zach mentions a couple of things about Ashika and the resurgence mode. You know, the, these are some of the POIs. This is how the mode works. And now we want to give a tip. Um, and the tip is to split up from your teammates. And this was an area I decided not to do a graphic for. I think it would have been better to do a similar graphic using those four character model cutouts that I had already set up, but uh, I made a decision in my mind to not do it because I felt like it just was gonna take too much time. If I did have the time to do it, what I would do is, Zach says, one of my first tips for you is to split up from your teammates, so that way you don't all get wiped. So what I would have done is had the four character models on a 2D map or building or something and um, I would have just had them dispersed going in different directions or something and then maybe have showed them all getting wiped because they were in one direction through a grenade or something like that. But I think in order for me to do something like that cleanly, this would have taken too much time. Or I could have used arrows. I could have used um, arrows to point out to show a, a different direction. And I think what I'm doing here right now is I'm actually I'm rendering out the intro. Yeah. So this is the whole sequence that we have right now, and I am just I'm playing it back to see how the pacing is and um, see if there's any more tuning that we need for this opening sequence because I really want this to be good, and I think I render this out. And now, oh, we jump forward a little bit into the sign animation that I do. So to finish my thoughts on um, the gameplay portion. This is, a, this is a little bit forward, but 
what I'll say is that what I decided to do for the gameplay is to use text and subtitles for the bulk of Zach's talking points through the, the rest of the video. I just didn't feel like it was worth my time at that point to incorporate more of those animations because I had already been working on this video for a couple of days at this point and I wanted to make sure we could post it by Monday. And I believe it was Saturday when I was working on that. So this is Sunday, day before we got a post. And um, this was like the, one of the last big decisions I made for the video. I wanted to keep the, the jungle tourist vibe themes. So I had an idea to put the tips on signs. <laughs> and I found these signs on Envato. There was a, a collection of them, graphic cartoony signs. And what I did is I downloaded them. They were already PNGs, transparent backgrounds, brought them into the fusion page. And I think I only have a couple of nodes um, that I use in the fusion page. Uh, one is a merge and text node to put the tips on the sign and the next thing that I'm doing is I want to figure out how how to bring these things into DaVinci and what I wanted to do was really make it cartoony and have like a door spring animation you know that where it just goes like bang, flies forward and then bounces back and forth really quickly and apparently there is a way to do it and this is me trying to figure out how to do it right now. You can kind of see that um, that spline that's showing on screen right now. That's the uh, the transform animation. There's a way to do this with, oh, and there goes Da Vinci. <laughs> da Vinci crashes. Um, oh, there goes again. <laughs> There's a way to do this um, by right-clicking on properties in Fusion and making an anim curve, an animation curve. It went way over my head. Um, yeah, way over my head. So here I had to make a decision to continue to try to figure out how to do these animation curves or just do it manually. And so that's what I do. I decided to do it manually. Does it take a little more time than if I just could do it with one button? Yes but at least I'm in control with how this works and I know I can do it. If I were to continue along the path of this new setting that I've discovered in Fusion that I don't fully understand, it could end up looking really good, but it's a time thing, right? It's like a, maybe the next time I try it again and this time, like the next time I try it, I have already like a basic understanding of how to get to there and then I can just learn how to use it appropriately. But for now, I'm just gonna do what I know and that I can use well. So that's what I do. So I get to a point to where I have the sign slide on screen and then I use the rotation property to have it bounce back and forth from right to left. And I have to change the pivot point to the bottom of the sign because otherwise if you don't, you'll be pivoting around the center of it and it'll look more like a, a pinwheel than it will if like the sign post was actually stuck in the ground. I'm on Envato, trying to bring in a spring sound effect or a wobbly sound effect. And this is one where I couldn't find something I really liked. I, I think I settle on um, that spring pack that you're seeing up top. Yeah, I do. So what I ended up using and I tried playing with um, using uh, different scents or lower scents and semi scents in the, uh, the audio tab. But yeah, again, it just, I don't know, just did not look exactly how I wanted to do. Or excuse me, not look, sound. Brandon. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? I think the sign ends up doing the job. I think it could have ended up looking a lot better, but 
what it does do in the time that I spent to make this is that it's fun. It fits the theme of the video and it actually adds to the video itself. The thing I try to avoid because I'm not great with visual effects and graphics is I try not to force any graphic or effect that doesn't, um, that doesn't add to what the video is doing. When I first started learning to edit, I, I would add a glow effect, light ray effects, and different transitions to everything that I was doing. And then you watch it back. And at the time, you feel like it's cool because you were able to add something to it, but it doesn't really add from the video. Anybody who watches a lot of videos will see that and know, oh, that's cheap. Like, that's lazy. That's a lazy way of doing your videos. So that's what I try to avoid. Sometimes it can't be helped, you know, when you're trying something new, it, it might come off a little cheap, pokey, whatever. I, sometimes you just can't help it. But as you go along, you begin to learn what things work well, what things don't work well. So um, in retrospect, I would have liked to put more time into the sign coming on screen, kind of screeching to a halt, and then having like this over dramatic wobble. But it still slides on screen. It's got a little bit of a wobble, and um, it displays the text pretty well. So I'm happy with it. I'm happy with how it came out. And for YouTube land, sometimes that's all you gotta do. You just gotta be happy with, a, <laughs> you just gotta be happy enough because you gotta meet the deadlines, you know? So from here, what I'm going to be doing is, um, I think for the, there's one last thing that I decide, like one last big, I, I use big in quotes. Um, I'll say one last, uh, visual that I add that I'm happy with, but this is what I was saying earlier. The bulk of my time and this is a part I don't end up recording because it's there's not a whole lot to talk about with it, but a bulk of my time for the rest of this video is now going to be sorting through the gameplay, syncing up what Zach is saying and making sure it matches the gameplay, and then making sure that I'm also letting the gameplay play out so that people can actually watch what you're talking about something that can really that can happen when you're doing this style of video and you if somebody watched the video and um you fail otherwise please let me know but something that can happen is you get so focused on doing edits and uh music and <laughs> dinosaur signs that you forget to actually show off the game which is what people click on the video for so that's something I'm keeping in the back of my mind as I'm going through this video is there has got to be points in this video where we actually just let the gameplay play out. We give people a breath from Zach or a breath, a break, a breath, both a break and a breath from what Zach is saying so that they can absorb the material that you're talking about. And I, I feel like we did an okay job at it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I nothing. I'm still learning a lot as I go along, but uh, that's that's where my thought was. That was where my my brain was for doing this kind of video. And um, here I'm I'm animating another sign, but this one I think I have swing in, but it's a similar format. So I have text that I'm overlaying. You can see the text in the merge node, and I'm trying to remember what Zach says so I can put that on the sign. Um, <laughs> we. Get the text on the sign, format it, and then the thing that I'm gonna do differently here is when I add the transform node. Actually, I think it's the same. I think I keep it basically the same. Right? Or do I change this? I'm not sure. I might have actually copied over the transform node from the other one, or did I not? I did this manually again, but for why, Brandon? Why? Why would you do this manually again? I'm so confused. Well, don't be like me. If you already have an animation or something keyframed or set up uh, the way you like it once, 
just copy and paste that sucker over. There is no need to do it again. But uh, apparently I am doing it again. And I don't know why, but here we go. But anyways, um, we're gonna animate this sign in again. And uh, I have a couple instances of different signs that I use throughout. And I believe I don't reset this all up, but you can see that essentially what I do is I have like, if you look at the spline right now, there's like a big jump in the position, translation, rotation, whatever it is. And then I create a keyframe much later down the road with the final position. And then what I do is I bring the spline up and down to almost dampen out its position. I overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot. And that's that's how I created that effect. Could be better, but um, yeah, it, it ends up looking okay. And there we go, there it is. There it is in the gameplay. Um, I'm looking at my timestamps and I don't think I show the loadout effect that I do, but there is one last graphic that I include in the video and you'll have to watch. You'll just have to watch the video to see it. Essentially, I use a um, I use that treasure map uh, look, but for the loadout, and I also add a paper tear transition. So maybe in a future video, I can go over how to do that. From here, the rest of the editing is less involved, but just as long. Now we go through, we add subtitles, we add music when appropriate, and uh, zooms and cuts where there needs to be. I'm really happy with how this video came out. Uh, there are some other things that I do, like there's a VHS playback that we do, and um, there was, oh, what's the other thing that I do in this video? There's like a couple other things that I do that I haven't done in previous videos, so really happy with how it came out. If you watched it, let me know what you thought. Tell me if there was things that you would have improved on the edit. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, man, give yourself 120 brownie points. I mean, sure enough. I appreciate you all, uh, sincerely. Let me know if you guys have any questions on anything in the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.